In this video, I'm going to provide an overview of what layers do in the GIMP uh, software package. Now we're going to start out very basic here. This video is more concerned about familiarizing you with using the layers panel. Now before I actually even make a file, just a reminder here as far as the interface of GIMP is concerned. You can find the layers panel in the lower right hand side here. You'll see the term layers and right now it's not much to look at just because we haven't made a file yet. One thing to note is every time that you do make a file though, you do uh, get what is called background, which is the default layer. Now layers are extremely important in graphic design because of the fact that we utilize those for different elements of the overall design. And this gives us a little bit more control over them so that we can go in and we can rearrange them as far as what is closest to the front, what is furthest back, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and get started here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a brand new document. Just tell it OK on the defaults, not concerned about color or anything. And notice now, let's go back to the layers in the lower right hand side. By default, you see background. Now there's also a couple of things that appeared as well. First off, this is a common occurrence here where you have the eyeball. That means that you can see that current layer. I turn it off, you get this checkerboard element here. In most graphic programs, the checkerboard is a denotation of transparency, that there is nothing there. So let's go ahead and turn the eye back on so we can see our layer. There is another subcategory here. You can see when I hover that if I click on it, it is what we call the lock. There's going to be times where you put something on a layer and you don't want it to move. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to lock it down. Now, I'm going to go ahead here and I am going to, oh, let's go ahead and change the background color. In some previous videos, I talked a little bit about the foreground and background color. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to double click, and I'm going to choose a new color for the foreground. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to say edit, fill with foreground color, just so that we're not staring at the bright white the entire time there. Now, what else can I do as far as layers are concerned? Well, one of the first things is you can just add a layer directly in the program. Normally, just as a note, and this is a personal preference as far as workflow goes, I like to use the background as it's almost like the base of whenever I'm working on a piece of art, like you know, if I'm working with acrylics or oil paints. You put that base down and then you don't touch it. So often what I'll do is I will actually come over and I'll just lock the background. Yes, I know it's only just a a color there, but it keeps me from adding other elements, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment here. Now when I'm ready to do an additional layer here, that's where all the way down at the bottom here, across the bottom of the software package, this comes into play. You're going to see what looks like add a new page here, but what it is, is it's actually add a new layer. So you're looking at the first button that is farthest to the left on the layers panel. I'll go ahead and click this, and you're going to get a whole new pop-up here. For right now, I want the layer to fill my entire image, and I'm going to call this new draw layer. Now, one other thing to point out here, and I'll bring it to the center here, is down at the very, very bottom here. This, this may be something you want to work with, but normally we do put um, layers in where they are transparent. We're going to add elements because we want that background to show through. So I'll go ahead and say OK. So here you can see now I have two layers appearing here. You can tell which layer is the current active layer because it's that darker gray. And what I'll do now is let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and grab the brush real quick. And what I'm going to do is do a little bit here as far as the splash is concerned. There we go, and then maybe even kind of take down the opacity a little bit here. So I'm on the correct layer here, and we're going to start kind of just kind of coloring over that. So now, just to show you here just the first half of this, I'm going to grab the Move tool, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click and hold, 
And you notice how I can actually reposition this element that I just made, where I can kind of move it around. So maybe if I actually wanted it more up here, maybe I wanted it coming up from the bottom. This is the power of layers. I'm actually going to go ahead and control Z this back into position though. Oop, went too far, so we're going to redo the paintbrush. So this is a great demonstration here. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. I decide that I want to add a second color to this. Well, do I want them to be one unit or do I want to have separate controls over each of the elements that I'm now adding in? So for instance here, like if I go back up here and let's say I grab the brush tool one more time and I'm like, you know what? I actually want to add in a little bit of the cyan here, maybe make it a little bit darker so you can see it. But I also want to come over and we're going to do a different brush style here. So now I can come in and I'm going to go ahead and kind of, you know, speckle that through on top and bottom, just kind of giving a different edge there. So, okay, cool. Add in my second element here. Now, this is layers though. Notice I still only have the two here, but I drew right on top of that purple there. Now, when I go and move, you see what happens here. This is all one entity as a layer. And this can be okay in certain drawing situations. This is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with this. But if you were thinking that you wanted to have control of each of the individual colors for their paintbrushes, then you actually uh, messed up here. We would have wanted to make a brand new layer for that. So I can actually control Z a few times here. Let's get rid of those. And now what I'll do is I'll come back and why don't I do new layer draw? We'll say two, we'll make this transparent. And then on this one, what I will do is I'll go ahead, let's grab that brush again, and maybe I'll take up the opacity a little bit. That was a little light. And now this time I'm gonna go ahead and kind of drag along the edges again here. Kind of make a whole new look there. Now, if I go into the move tool, Notice, you see how now this is moving independently from the other objects, the other layer there. So I can actually reposition it, I can do different things with it, etc. that I need to do. Now, to play it careful or safe, what I may also want to do is, remember how I locked that background? Maybe that new draw layer, I say, you know what, I want to lock that down just so that I don't accidentally move that. I'm gonna go ahead here and not only link this down as far as the locking, but I, this is a good opportunity to also talk about more specific locks that you may need whenever you're working inside of GIMP. GIMP also has a subcategory of locks, which you can find right above here. So you have in terms of it will lock pixels specifically, it will lock position and size, it will actually lock the alpha channel. For right now, since this is kind of an introductory video, using the lock pixels and lock position and size are really good choices here. So like if I lock position and size while having the new draw layer selected, it might be really hard to see, but if you're following along, you may notice that with your move tool now, you see how I'm kind of getting this light up and also I'm getting actually a little warning down here at the bottom that the layer's position is locked. So I can actually also come down, I can do that with the background. So now I can maybe come in and I can just work with this layer, this third layer here and say, okay, well, you know, I need to make some changes and tweaks here, but I don't want to move anything else. So that's kind of the power of being able to lock things down. At any point, if you need to edit something, you can go in and you can just turn off the lock and everything, you know, you'll be able to move everything again. Now, another element in the layers lecture here and getting you started is that ability to reposition the layers in the stack. So for instance here, I've done some rearranging here and I say to myself, you know what? I actually want this new draw layer to be in front of new draw layer two. This is actually a pretty easy fix. I can actually click and hold on the new draw layer 
and I can rearrange it in the stack. And GIMP will actually denote that to me by giving me this harder line here that I can kind of reposition it. So there you can see it's now jumped in front of the new draw layer two there. So that's great whenever you make elements that are inside of GIMP. So finally, what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I wanna show you one more element that you can add in as a layer, and that's external graphics. So what I'm gonna do here first is I'm gonna do a save, and I'm just gonna save my default XCF. I actually had made a folder, so we're gonna call it on my desktop, and we're gonna call this Come up here, we're gonna call this Layers Demo. All right, now in this folder too, just so you can see, I have two additional images in here. So I wanna actually pull these images in and utilize them in my layout and design. This is not uncommon as far as the graphic design world is concerned. Either you or a photographer will be taking graphics that you will be integrating. Now, these images, I just want to point out, they come from pixabay.com. Uh, for those of you who are taking this as a class, please check the Blackboard site. I have several links to several uh, Creative Commons and uh, open source type uh, images that people just donate and let you use. So to come back in here, so I have two graphics here that I actually want to pull in and utilize in this layout. Now. One thing that you can do here, and this is where this menu bar comes into play here. There is a layers drop down, And what you can do is you can actually come in here under the layer here. First off, yes, you could come up here if you wanted to. You could use the layer, new layer here if you so chose. However, there is also an option. There are also several other options here as far as different things that you can do with the layers. We'll get into those later. But one other thing though is, okay, I wanna pull this image in. Under the file drop-down menu, there is an option here to open as layers. I wanna draw your attention to this also. This is a little bit different from things like Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. Adobe takes a different approach to this where they have um, embed or link the graphic. GIMP on the other hand just has it open as a layer. So if I click on this though, and that's why I wanted to save my working file is because of the fact that it will go to the location where you have your working file saved. So you can see I have these two graphics here and I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to open one of them. Now, talking a little bit here about what happened, it's always going to open and create the layer as the topmost layer here. Now, this is also personal preference, but it also uses the file name. As you can see, that's not the most glamorous name, but it'll work for our situation here. And now, I'm on the Move tool, I can go ahead and kind of reposition my graphic here. And maybe I'm saying that I actually want some of this to overlap it like I painted on top of it and there you can see I could even bring it down one more and it's completely it looks like it was painted over so I'm going to go ahead and lock that in one more time I'm going to add my second graphic now so I'm going to go back to that file we are going to go ahead and locate as far as um, pasting as a, opening as a layer rather and let's go grab the other one. So I have that bird picture there. We'll go ahead and open. And there you can see, whoops, the bird picture actually placed right above where my active selection was. So what I can actually do here is I can turn both of those off so I can get, just hide them real quick, kind of pull this back out. And there we go. And maybe for this one, I say, you know what? I actually want this one to look like it was placed afterwards. So now I've added some external content, controlled it with layers. I've also added in some painting as well using the internal tools inside of GIMP. And that's kind of the basics as far as getting comfortable working with layers.